I'm working on this uh, acrylic painting and I'm uh, just working on moving it forward and uh, one thing I thought of doing was I've got this crystal um, board here and I'm just going to add some of this matte medium to adhere it to the surface because I like some uh, visible texture but this is a geometric shape and it's in line with kind of this underpainting which has also got a lot of geometry. So I'm gonna adhere this and then before I paint on it, you know, make sure that it's really dry. So like that. Just happen to have this in my pile of papers. So you really want to firm these edges down and probably go over the surface as well, just to lock in the surface and make sure it's really adhered. So I'm also, um, as I do this, I'm obliterating some of what was under it, obviously, because this is very opaque. It's crystal paper, you can't see through it. It's certainly not transparent. Make sure with these thicker papers that you watch those edges because that's the part where you often will have things pop up on you. Also, the paper will expand a little bit once you get it, you know, depending on how um, liquid it is, like if you're using a glue, that's more liquid than this gel medium. But if you use more something with more liquid in it, it will expand even more. So that's one reason why I like these gels. Plus it's a very thick paper. So the thicker it is, you need something with a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less water so that it can handle that. And so I'm working on kind of this idea of obliteration um, as well as like additive things. So right now it's a very limited palette with just this red. And I wanna you know, get some more color into it. So one of the things that I like to do sometimes is just add pieces of collage paper as I go. And some of these collage papers may bring new colors into um, the picture. I've got some of my favorites. Um, this is a collage paper that has little bits in it that there are pieces of like newspaper from Korea or wherever this paper came from. So I like that because it's Asian paper. You can't really read it, but I suppose unless you understand how to read that language. Uh, so I will put that in here. Let me adhere it well. Now I don't have to use the uh, gel medium in this case, but since I have it out and I've got my tool here, you know, this is a very thin paper. I could use something uh, less stiff, but you know, since I have it out and my tool is full of it, I might as well just use it. So there's that. Now I'm going to start to look into my stash of papers and see what other fun things I have, because I know I have a lot of stuff. So here's a little bag of um, papers that my friend from Seattle sent me, Kathleen Demosthenes, and I want to thank her for uh, sending me uh, quite a lot of papers, and some were glued together and some I had to, you know, pull apart. So these are like street papers. They came off of telephone poles or, you know, graffiti or whatever, and I found it to be just like extraordinary and cool. So uh, I have this whole I put the scraps in here. These are the smaller pieces, and I have larger pieces, but you know, like things like this are pretty cool. So I'm just going to start to add papers. And they themselves have, like if I sand back against something like this, this has such an interesting shape. And because it's thicker paper, it's going to show its edge if I were to sand back. And I'm just putting it on anywhere. I'm not thinking I'm just putting it on because it doesn't really matter where I put it on at this point. There's no composition that I'm thinking about. So that quiets down a lot of what's going on over here. Plus it just gives me something to, I'm, I'm already like, I'm not thinking that I'm, I'm just building structure. I can just, even if I'm not thinking, I can tell that that's what's happening. So as I, I'm not thinking, I'm observing. I can see that I am building a structure here. What I like is the torn edge of this piece. I like the, the 
uh, it's worn, the paper is worn because it's been weathered, it's been outside in Seattle. <laughs> now if you don't adhere it well, then you know, that's a choice. You may intentionally do that so that if you sand it, those areas that you didn't uh, adhere down, well, they will come off more easily. And maybe that's what you want, it's more like a random release. So kind of keeping with um, this beautiful paper, which I love, it's just so weathered and so warm. It just really speaks to me. So I'm going to, uh, let's see if we can add to this palette. We've got red and blue now, red, white, and blue. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? As you kind of look through the colors of this, you, you either respond to it in a positive or a negative way. It's like, can you envision that piece on there? Like I can envision a part of that. And there's some graph paper stripes, but they're orange and white. So as you just look through a scrapbook, uh, I mean, scrapbook papers like this, you your eye, and if you hold it over your painting, you can say, yeah, I can envision that on there. Maybe a little bit of that. So in this case, which I don't mind that, that's kind of cool. Like some of this, it's thick, you know, and so what I would do is take my cutting board here and just, because I want kind of a, well actually I want a torn edge, so what am I talking about? I don't really need a cutting board. Um, but I want it to be kind of a controlled tear here, so the way I tear it is so that I get this uh, white edge here, right? So if I torn it in, in like in a different way, I wouldn't see this. I'd kind of see what I see over on this side, where there you can't see that white. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but so I like that one, and I also kind of liked this one. This has texture and it has dots, so that appeals to me. So let me see. If I were to cut this. So let me put that aside and put this under here. The reason for the punches would be to, here I've got this, and this is about the same size as these little circles, so I don't want to use that one, I want to use a different size and sometimes I'll turn the punch upside down so I can really see where I'm punching not that it matters too much uh, I might just tip the corner and kind of randomly do something that's just different you know changes the the feel for this and uh, I often like to combine a shape that has both you know, obviously this is a, sort of started as a square, so it started rectilinear, but it's got circles in it, and I want to add a little bit of a, a little bit of a rectangle down here, so let's do that. It's now I've got a very interesting shape, right, from the back, you can see that. And so that's just really interesting to me, and I, these little cutouts, these pieces that popped out are, are definitely worth saving, because they can be used for repetition with variation. So I put these away. And I just happened to find this, I, or this is the one I tore, right? So um, I'm watching these papers uh, that I glued down to see that they've got uh, still good holding power. And um, you know, this looks bizarre, but uh, you just never know. So what this does, you know, this, this piece right here is that it adds a lot of colors that I, you know, it has uh, definitely more uh, muted colors, or they're not high saturation in most cases, but it adds yellow, it adds blue, but it, adds, it doesn't add too much to it, and a lot of it could be obliterated. Or I could put it over here. Um, I could leave a little gap in between, but I think closing that up is actually a better idea if I did that. So that's one possibility. Now this is a huge piece, and I don't know if I like how, how big that's going to be. It's going to cover up a lot of stuff, so I might have to cut this down some more with the scissors. And uh, maybe that's just too much. So I might just cut this.
And the nice thing about using thick and thin papers is if you are a sander, if you like to sand, and I do love to sand, it's one of my favorite things because you never quite know what's going to have the, I mean, you kind of know what's going to have the high relief, but you just don't know what that's going to look like. And it's exciting. So that is part of my process. Um, whether it comes from collage paper or thicker paint, doesn't matter. Now I've got all these other little cool pieces that I could add because they sort of repeat the color and the shape. So now I'm going to add it up here. And stick that down like this. So now I've added uh, a piece that has that same brown color. Now the gel medium will dry perfectly clear. Not to worry about that. And uh, do I want more of this? No. Do I want more up here? too much. So, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe just a circle would be good. But I've got this circle here and this shape is, you know, same size and too close. So uh, maybe what I'll do is cut this again. Try to be straight. This is a more decidedly rectilinear piece, but it has the circles on it. Composition. This doesn't click, you know, just get out something else and try that. Like this is kind of cool because it has that same grayish blue color. In fact, this might have all come from the same piece. I just don't even know anymore. This would tie in with that brown and the blue, so this is definitely a good candidate for adding it somewhere. also got a bit of this nice red in it so it's a great candidate for joining the painting because it kind of fits. So building all these layers that actually have topography to them meaning that they are not flat there, there's definitely like structure there. Um, that could be kind of cool even though I'm going over that, that circle over there. And I'm also looking at you know just observing value what what are the values here I mean this is dark this is mid-tone and this is dark and mid-tone here so that's why it's kind of blending in and no decisions made until you pretty much glue it down it's a thinner piece of black Do I need a, this would be good for value I need to change the value and 